Hey y'all, it's Rachel with Stella Rose. Welcome. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for me. And if you're not, welcome back. It's been a little while since I've posted an edited content video, but we've been really busy in the shop and I can't wait to share this content with you over the next few videos. I also have to get my bathroom done. I kind of got derailed with a lot of the stuff going on at the shop. It's super exciting. First, I'd like to address something really quickly that happened. On one of the past videos that was a Facebook Live that we moved over to YouTube, a subscriber by the name of Heather left a message making fun of me because I have multiple sclerosis. I'm creating a community, a safe community, where my viewers, followers, and subscribers can all come together, where we can all positively support one another. Constructive criticism is always welcome. However, the one thing I do not want is a community where one feels unsafe and unwanted. So if you feel like you cannot watch me because I have a disability called multiple sclerosis, then please kindly unsubscribe from me. And to all of you amazing humans that have disabilities, that get up every single day, some days like me, slower than other days, kudos and cheers to all of us for kicking our disabilities in the butt. So I've been working on displays with our shop and I wanna take you along to come see my latest display. Let's go. I was gifted this amazing waterfall dresser. However, it is in really bad shape, including the veneer. And I find it easiest to remove the veneers off of damaged pieces like this by soaking with a wet towel on the veneer that needs to come off for up to 24 hours. Then I use an iron on high with a steam setting and I iron the piece and then the veneer peels right up. After I got all of the veneers removed, I then took a sander and I made sure all of the little bits and pieces and shards that came up with it were sanded smooth. When I was given this dresser, the doors were not on it properly and the drawers would not work. The rungs on them or the slides were damaged. So in order to get the door to hang properly, I purchased new hinges and they were larger than the previous hinges. So I had to carve out a spot so that they would fit securely. Once I did that and they fit in the little slot that I had carved out for them, I then drew holes or drew pencil marks in the holes where I needed to drill a pilot hole in so that when I put the screw in, it wouldn't split this old dry wood. Once I got the door fixed and the drawers fixed and I cut a bottom piece to go in it, I sprayed the inside of it black and brought it into the house to paint the rest. I painted the inside of the doors in white swan because I was going to decoupage the inside of them with a buffalo check plaid paper. I then started painting the top here with DIY cowgirl coral. And then I painted the center in kissing booth. I painted the bottom in blue iris and somehow I lost that footage. You see me here spraying some shellac. I had quite a bit of bleed through. I believe this dresser had been oiled at some point in time previous to me receiving it. I'm blending here the blue iris into the kissing booth. Purple is my favorite color and this created the most magnificent purple color that I am in love with. I have one brush for each one of the colors and you see me here blending and feathering the blue iris into the kissing booth. 
and then you'll see me feathering down the kissing booth into the blue iris. And then I took a third brush for the purple that it created. And you'd see me going up and down between the two and then across to blur the lines. Again, moisture is the key to blending. So you will see me consistently use my water girl to keep moisture on the paint surface to make it easier to blend. After I'm done feathering the two colors into each other, I then take a clean, dry, neutral brush and you'll see me going in every which direction. And this is so that I'm softening the brush strokes. And this gives it a seamless look between colors. You will also see me continually spraying because moisture is the key to blending. You're also gonna see me here picking out a lot of bristles. I did just recently purchase four brand new caddy brushes from Paint Pixie, and they do have a manufacturer's defect. The bristles are coming out of the epoxy they're encased in. I did reach out to Paint Pixie and they would not replace them. So I'm gonna have to look for another brush that will do the same thing. So if you know of one, please drop it in the comments for me. Normally Paint Pixie brushes are decent brushes to use. Here she is, I'm all done painting. However, I wasn't done playing yet. I'm a retailer of Would You Bend and Posh Chalk products along with DIY clay-based paint and JRV stencils. And I wanted to see how well all of these products would work together. So when I came up with a plan, I decided to make a trip on over to Hobby Lobby and purchase a product called Liquitex. When I got there, Hobby Lobby's version or their brand was already on clearance, so I purchased it. This is an acrylic medium base that you add to products to extend the open time, and that means to extend the usability time. I bought it in both the matte and the gloss, and I mixed it 50-50 with the extra flexible paste from Posh Chalk, and I mixed it really well. After I was done mixing this, I got out my pigments from DIY. This is Violaceous. These are extremely heavily concentrated pigments. Look at this color, y'all. It is beautiful. And all I had to do was mix it up and I went to work on the stencil. These pigments and all these products worked so well together. I then got out my stencil from JRV called Musical Damask. It is designed by Vintage Retail Therapy by Mora and then I applied this medium to the stencil to create a ray stencil. I normally would have used my blades from IOD, but I left those at the shop, so I improvised and it worked just fine. Look at the texture that was created with this stencil and the medium. Oh my gosh, I love it. But I still wasn't done playing. With Posh Chalk pastes, you can take the heat gun to it and it'll still pop and give you even more raised texture. But I wasn't sure if it would still do the same thing because I added that acrylic medium to the mixture and it did just fine. I love it. I'm now going to decoupage the insides of the doors and the drawers. I'm applying my DIY Crystal Clear Patina, which is a decoupage medium, a transfer gel, and a top coat all in one. And I have did it with my Wooster Foam brush. This brush is amazing for decoupaging with, especially napkins, they don't tear. After I apply the medium, to the surface, I then use a piece of saran wrap to smooth it all out so that there's good contact between the paper and the surface and there's no wrinkles. This way when it dries, there's no bubbles in the paper. Then once it's dried, 
I take a 320 grit sandpaper block and I sand the edges so that they come off easily and you've got a clean line. It's now time to put a top coat on decoupage paper and I'm using Big Top from DIY. I then got out my Posh Chalk pigments in Green Fallow and the infuser and I mixed the two together. I wanted to see how well it would adhere to different surfaces so I used it on the original metal handles for the doors and then on two knobs that I found that fit for the doors and it adhered well to both the metal and the stone on the knobs. I then got out my Sweet Pickens Milk Paint top coat. This is a very flat top coat that I wanted to use on this piece and I applied it to the entire piece all over. After she was done drying, I added the hardware to the doors and the drawers and she was all done. Let's take a quick look back at how I had received her. She had definitely seen better days. All of the paint and products used in today's video you can find at stellarosboutique.co or at Stella Rose Mercantile and Boutique at 524 Justice Drive, Greenville, Tennessee or at Stella Rose Boutique at 222 Collier Drive in Sevierville, Tennessee inside of Violet Kingdom Boutique behind Fuddruckers. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and tell me in the comments what your favorite part was and make sure you hit that subscribe button. See you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!